This is a very special map, because it's actually a display controlled by this massive redstone contraption that saves images using music disc. The display has a resolution of 128 by 128 and each pixel can have 16 different colors. This project started months ago and it took many iterations, hundreds of hours of testing, troubleshooting and building. And all of it was made possible by one small change in 1.19.4. Just make sure that you watch till the end, because this display has a feature that is absolutely mind-blowing. Map displays have been around for more than a decade. When a player is holding a map, any copy of that map will update anywhere in the world, even in other dimensions. This has been used to show a few images, some information for minigames, or even to make small color displays. But I have never seen a full-scale colored map display. Probably because the traditional way to make a color display requires the use of a 1 to 4 scale map, meaning one pixel on the map represents a 4x4 four four area and the total size of the map is 500 by 512 blocks. My method just uses normal maps which are 128 by 128 blocks. One block is represented by one pixel on the map and I use concrete powder to set the color of a pixel. Because concrete powder is easy to move, there are 16 different colors and I already made a color display using concrete powder before. Its resolution was 64 by 64 but it was vertical so it could not be seen on the map. At first I didn't think about turning this into a map display but then one small feature changed everything. Minecraft 1.19.4 introduced a seemingly minor feature. Jukeboxes could now interact with hoppers and droppers. It sounds like a small change, but the possibilities this opens cannot be overstated. A comparator reading from a jukebox will give a signal strength from 1 to 15, depending on which disc is inside the jukebox. Previously, the only way to put in or take out a disc was by hand. Now, we can automatically insert a music disc with a dropper or hopper, read its value using a comparator and then retrieve it using a hopper minecart. This means we can use music disc to easily store and read large amounts of data. Since the music disc put out 15 different signal strengths and we can take a non-stackable item that is not a disc to represent zero, one item slot can now save one of 16 different signal strengths. And since the display has 16 colors, this is a perfect match. We can assign each redstone strength to a color, starting with zero for white, going up to 15 for pink. We then use a vertical red coder to assign a unique output to each signal strength. Unlike the commonly used red coders, this design doesn't use torches, which are prone to burning out under rapid pulsing. Now, let's put a bunch of music discs inside a shulker and a bunch of shulkers inside a barrel or chest. Then, we can use a shulker unloader to feed a disc reader and put them back into a shulker after they have been read. Every time I send a pulse to the music disc reader, it will read the next disc and then give a signal strength as output. Essentially, what we've created is a form of tape storage in Minecraft. Very useful for saving and reading large chunks of data. Since maps have a 128 by 128 resolution totaling over 16,000 pixels, just 22.5 barrels are sufficient to save one frame, which compared to other methods is very compact. I already made a video using this technique to successfully print a 64 by 64 image, so I know it works, but there was lots of room for improvement. I used one disc reader to control a four white strip of the display. The way this works is that the output of the red coder activates a four white rail. Then there is a wall behind that shortly gets pushed down and then up again. Since the wall alternates between glass and four blocks, the signal will only pass if there is a full block. That means every output of the red coder turns into four, giving one disc reader 64 outputs. We can use 32 disc readers next to each other to control a 128 block wide area, turning 512 outputs into 2048. I upgraded my previous disc reader to be faster and more reliable. It can read one disc every 4 redstone ticks, that's as fast as one disc reader can go. For a full image, each disc reader has to read 512 discs. This means that each reader has 19 shulkers in its barrel and since they read one disc every 4 redstone ticks, it takes a total of 3 minutes and 25 seconds to read the 8 kilobytes of data for one image. 
but that's when I started to run into issues. While testing, I noticed that when everything ran together, it ran slower. Minecraft calculates everything going on in so-called game ticks. One second is 20 game ticks, and calculating a game tick shouldn't take longer than 50 milliseconds. Anything higher means your computer can't calculate everything fast enough, and the game runs slower than it's supposed to, which we call lag. It was quite concerning to me that the game already struggled to run at full speed, because this was only a small part of the display, and later I would need to move a lot of concrete powder, which generates a lot more lag than just redstone. So at this point, I didn't even know if it was possible at all, but the only way to find out was to build it, so I continued. This whole disk reader setup was a lot more work than I anticipated, because I ran into some weird issues. When I ran up to 6 readers at the same time, everything was fine. But when running more, certain readers ran into issues that could not be replicated when running them on their own. Then, after some small changes to the design and lots of trial and error, I got it to work. There were some things I forget to test, and that would come to bite me in the ass later. But I just started to work on the display part itself. My previous display was only vertical, so you could see it from the front but not on the map. This made it possible to change a single pixel by using a piston wall behind it. This piston wall could be precisely controlled in height. To change a pixel, first you activate the piston wall till one block below the pixel you want to change. After that, you drop in the new color from above and when that's in position, the whole wall gets activated and the new pixel will replace the old one. I like that feature, so I also built a piston wall for my map display. But I still needed to move all these blocks so they were visible on a map. There are two orientations which we can use for the map display. One is completely flat and the other one is a staircase orientation. Any other orientation and the same color will have different shades across the map. I chose a staircase orientation because that makes it very easy to move the blocks, since it does not require complicated redstone wiring. It does use a lot of pistons though. And there is just one problem. The only way to get a block in a certain position is to move from the top all the way there. This also means you cannot change a single pixel, but you have to refresh the entire frame. Building a frame takes over 3 minutes, so that's why I decided to keep the vertical aspect of the display. That way you can print to the vertical display to make some quick changes or just print to the map display directly. The next project was color storage. It needed to be much larger than the old one, because not only is each frame bigger, it also needed to be faster. And I would like to be able to print to the vertical display while there is a picture on the map display. So I redesigned the storage. And I thought I'd just be able to use the same system to feed the blocks to the storage that the old display used. But little did I know that this decision would cost me much more time than it saved. See, I only ever printed one image successfully with the old version. I never printed a few images after each other. So while testing a new version, certain pixels would just stop working randomly. This meant I had to redesign the feed mechanism, which in itself wasn't that much work. But getting the timing correct took a lot of time. Since the layout changed, it had to be completely redone. See how all the colors are stacked on top of each other? If I push all the colors at the same time, the highest block takes the longest to reach the destination. So to equalize that, the top must get pushed first, and every color below that has to be pushed with a different delay to reach the destination at the same time. To be able to print to the vertical display, I needed a small lift since the top of the color storage already touched build height limit and the bottom of the ramp almost touched the bottom of the world. But luckily I already had a design for my old display, so some small adjustments later and I was able to test printing. The first thing I tested was just these simple colored lines. Since it was easy to program and I could test every color at once to see if there were any issues. And after lots of testing and tweaking, it printed to the vertical display perfectly and reliable. Moving the image to the map display worked great too. But first, I needed a way to automatically put the right music disc in the right shulker to print an actual image. Because <laughs> I'm not going to put over 16,000 music discs by hand. For the previous version, I built a scanner for that purpose. To use the scanner, you first build the image with concrete powder, then the scanner will break the image block by block in the same order as it later will be printed. After a block is broken, it enters an item sorter, where it gets sorted into a slice. 
This then sends a signal to that slice to release the corresponding music disc. Which then enters the shulker box below this contraption. And when the shulker box is filled, it enters the barrel below. One disc reader controls a four wide section. So the scanner breaks the image in four wide sections. When the entire image is broken, the barrels are filled with 19 shulkers. These barrels are then placed on top of the disc reader. I couldn't use the old scanner because as you can see I had assigned different colors to different discs. And I needed to scan the image in two parts since it was only 64 blocks wide. Then the scanner ran into some more problems and I decided to just redesign it. It didn't take too long and the scanner works reliable now. Now let's print an actual image. Then maybe you'll see the hidden potential which I will discuss at the end of the video. To start printing, I saw the redstone cloak in the back. All 32 disc readers will then start reading this and send signals to the color storage which then pushes whatever color that got activated. Then, when each reader has read 4 discs and a complete line has formed, it enters the lift after which it drops to the vertical display. And here it seems to break, but that's just a rendering issue. The blocks do actually move like they're supposed to and fall all the way down to the vertical display. If you want, you could immediately send the blocks to the map part, but for now we'll just let the block fall on top of each other at the vertical display. It's supposed to print an entire image in about 4 minutes, but since the MSPT is over 50, it takes 7 minutes. This is already incredible, but now let's move the blocks to the map display. This is also supposed to take 4 minutes, but my PC does it in 6. You could also immediately print to the map display and skip the vertical display. Then it should take about 6 minutes, but my PC will do it in 10. Isn't that awesome? You can place this map anywhere in the world, as long as there is a player holding a map loading the area. You don't need any mods nor command blocks to make this work. So when this map hangs far away, it looks like the map art just magically appears when in fact it's made by a giant redstone machine. But there are still some big problems we need to solve. Like how do we get all these blocks that have been printed to the map? back to the correct color storage. Without that feature, you'd quickly run out of concrete powder. First, I made a conveyor, using honey blocks and slime to move the concrete powder over 400 blocks to the back of the contraption. This went quite well apart from some minor issues that were easily fixed. Then I used the same lift design from earlier to get the blocks all the way to the top. Where I ran into an issue I wasn't expecting. Falling block entities will break and drop their item if they exist longer than 30 seconds. That's why I added this little station where the blocks will land on scaffolding and then continue their journey up to the top, where they will enter another short conveyor and then the sorting station. And here I could have saved a lot of time if I just thought about the design a little better. For example, I could have placed the color storage below the display. This would not only decrease the footprint, but also decrease the distance a concrete powder block has to travel, thus decreasing lag. But since my first approach worked without any issues, I didn't think about it anymore until I edited this video. When the blocks finally arrive at the top, they need to be sorted. So how can we sort concrete powder? I decided to drop the blocks next to a piston wall. Then there are 16 layers, one for each color. To sort the block, first send a signal to one of the 16 inputs, the piston for that color will then activate and you can drop the block from above. When the block has landed, another signal is sent and the block will get pushed in and the pistons retract. Now you might ask, how can we automatically select the correct color for each block? Well, sorting blocks back into the storage is just like printing, but reversed. And the blocks you print first will also be the blocks that get sorted first. 
That means I can just use a second disk reader that reads the same disk that we are used to print the image. But we can't just connect the reader to the piston wall. There are a few challenges we have to face first. For printing we can immediately send the signal to the storage. But when sorting the blocks arrive in rows because of the conveyor and lift. So I needed a way to send 4 signals at once every 16 ticks instead of 1 every 4 ticks. That way you can drop the row of blocks in section of 16 so we activate 4 readers at the same time, all delayed by one redstone tick. But how can we send 4 signals at once when the reader only reads one disk at a time? The solution I came up with works like this. There are two droppers facing each other. The input is connected to the disk reader. And there's a reset that resets every dropper at once. This memory cell is connected to a second one just like it. Using the same wall and glass trick the disk reader used. So you can control exactly when the second memory cell reads from the first one. The output of the second memory is connected to the sorter. That worked great. But when running the first test I ran into issues with the disk reader. Because Minecraft kept crashing when I tried to run the sorting at a 4 redstone tick clock cycle. I increased the clock cycle to 5 redstone ticks at which the disk reader didn't work. So I redesigned it and then I redesigned it and it finally worked. And this is what it looks like when you saw the picture. Isn't that amazing? You can see the game runs quite slow when sorting. At almost 600 MSPT it's 12 times slower than it should be. One of the reasons why this project took so long was if I changed something and I wanted to test it. I had to wait 30 minutes to see if it worked. But I'm glad I finally got it to work. Because that brings me closer to the real reason I made this. The mind blowing potential this display has. As you know it covers an entire map. That means if I hang two maps next to each other there will be no gaps. Which allows me to double the resolution by building two displays. But why is it there? You could build the display 18 times in a 3x6 grid to show images like this picture I took in Switzerland. On a redstone display. It just blows my mind that that is possible. Yes, that means it will take about 18 times longer to just render a single frame. But I'm upgrading my PC. So it'll be fine. This is only the beginning. So if you want to see where this crazy journey takes me, subscribe. And if you like this video, go watch that video. Thank you for 2.6 million views on that already. And thank you for watching all the way to the end. Bye!